you have a blog on the right side of your, of your, of your screen. So you can go to the channel and Renata Pepe will translate everything for you. So we will speak in Portuguese and then Renata will translate into English. Okay, so now I come back to... <laughs> and so now I'm going to talk in Portuguese with you guys. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to just read a very brief introduction. I hope it's a, indeed brief about this conversation that we start now. And now would like... So we are very happy to be this in this collaboration with Climate Fringe and with the Pipe Factory team. Uh, this is a conversation that was uh, actually produced uh, with by a lot of people with Pipe Factory, Simon Shark from Necessary Space, Renato Rocha, who is here, the filmmaker Priscilla Brasil, and Ben Valentini, the ISDN, which is one of the partners uh, in Casa Comun, Common House. Apart from this, these two events that are happening between today and tomorrow, these two virtual gatherings that we are having, they wouldn't be possible without the support of Anna Didonet and Renata Pepe, who is now actually doing the translation. So thank you so much of them. And also thank you so much to Casa Ninja uh, that is actually supporting with the marketing and dissemination. The aim of these both conversations is to actually, uh, for people that actually come from the Amazonia, but that feel they are not being heard uh, during this climate change discussions, and about the protagonism of Amazon people. So the Amazon became like a key area for, for discussion and more and more international um, uh, uh, people actually are turning themselves to Amazons. Uh, and, and, and as many, many people from the North, global North actually, are actually collaborating uh, with this uh, with with what with with people from coming from the Amazons, we are just discussing right now. Where is our space as Amazonian people in this conversation? Are we protagonists? And we actually uh, want to think about the arts uh, as a propeller for actually social change, for actually making questions. And and there's something that is always uh, in our mind and head. Where are the Amazonian artists in this? and where they're gonna have space to actually talk about their practices and their impact in the region. I'm a journalist and I lived in the area of the Amazon, was born there as well. And I actually started with a long uh, career uh, developing arts projects uh, around, around the Amazon. We would go by boat, we would go by roads to actually delivering literature, film and arts projects to young people that many times doesn't have access to any kind of culture. There is no public policies developed so far for people who actually deliver art and culture in the Amazons, in the Amazon region. So we are just trying right now with this government, actually, we are facing an even more fragile uh, public policies, even non-existence. Uh, supporting uh, Brazilian culture or Amazonian culture as well. I've been working for almost 20 years um, in, in, in my role career, 10 years here in the UK. I'm one of the founders of the first Amazon film festival here in the UK. And people always ask me, but is this the Amazon culture? What is the Amazon culture? Uh, the, the Amazon doesn't have a one-of-a-kind culture. Like it's it's multi, it's peripheral, it's black, it's indigenous, it's it and it is most of all, yeah, as I said, indigenous. It is Caripuna. She's just mentioning all the names of indigenous indigenous communities that live in the in the area of the Amazon region. Uh, she's just uh, giving some names of local Amazon artists that work there, and especially Jade Esper, which is one of the artists that died recently, a very famous Amazonian artist, and talk about his legacy uh, that he left behind. So what is the role of the Amazonian artist, and what is the strategy that is that we are going to use for such an important moment where the culture is very important for us to actually reach and why the audience and make awareness about climate change. So I'm not going to make it this much longer. Uh, our idea here is to actually hear our guests here from Common House. I'm going to start with Renato and we are trying here to actually make a discussion that is 
that it flows uh, in a nice way and without many questions to making many questions, but just actually give some insights and inputs about how the Amazonian artists can actually uh, have more space, more protagonism, and actually more uh, uh, a more um, a wider role in this activism. We want to talk a little bit about Casa Comun, Comun House, how this project was born and how Renato worked with these artists, basically. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I, I, I apologize myself to actually talk. I feel a bit, this will be the first to speak, actually, because I'm the only one, I'm the only guest that I'm not from the Amazon region uh, here in this table, in this uh, in this conversation. Uh, but because I'm a collaborator and a partner uh, uh, with this uh, artist, I, I ask to actually uh, uh, because I'm the one who actually furthest from the, our indigenous ancestrality, from an indigenous background, I'm, I don't have any heritage uh, from coming from any indigenous communities. But I, I would like to actually uh, celebrate all the beautiful uh, background mixed uh, 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 people that we have in Brazil that were here way before the country was invaded. Uh, by um, by European um, countries um, uh, 500 years ago, um, and and I mean of course uh, yeah the power structures hasn't shifted then it's just been like changing in the faces of colonialism in a way uh, because if before it was like ships that were arriving in in Brazil in the country uh, armed with 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 soldiers now it's big corporations much more powerful, much more uh, better armed uh, even, and with more arms uh, that actually can grab uh, uh, more powerful and, ex and bigger arms to actually uh, grab our, our, our power. So actually ex the exploitation uh, uh, it continues actually, and it goes beyond and behind um, uh, every one of us. I'm as as a Brazilian person, I always had, uh, I've always been very aware of the social political issues. Uh, I come from the favela of Vigigal, which is a favela. Uh, I one of the founders of Nós do Morro, which is a theatrical company in a favela, one of the poorest communities in, in Brazil. I always in the, understood art as a social transformation uh, a tool, a way of actually propelling social change uh, in, in deprived communities. Uh, actually always been engaged uh, with the, the, the learnings that Paulo Freire and Augusto Boal uh, left us and they were the inspiration for many of the projects in the 80s when we when where the life expectation of a young person living in a favela uh, was that between they were 16 or 17 or 19 they would be involved in in the drug dealing into trafficking drugs and it would be killed at a very young age so there was a necessity and need to actually uh, understand how to provide uh, different opportunities for these uh, young people and i'm i'm a I'm a, a seed of this movement. I, I am, I've, I've been working internationally for a very long time. I worked in 13 countries already. And when I, and I went back to London to work with Lyft uh, Festival and Royal Shakespeare Company, I was more aware about um, the situation of Latinity, to being Latin, basically. And I started studying more profoundly Brazilian culture. Um, and, um, I went back to my roots, which goes back to the, our indigenous ancestrality and the relationship with the Amazon. And not by any chance, and when I get back to Brazil, I did an artistic residency in the Amazon and in Pará. And I got to know wonderful artists that, um, that actually, uh, and I actually took part in this debate, in this conversation, how myself, as being in a central area as Rio de Janeiro, as Sao Paulo, had more opportunity in investments and funding. Uh, so from that, we we started to to think about how to actually gather forces, uh, and 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 that's how 
alongside Verlene Mesquita, which is my partner as well in Manaus, uh, a, a ballet dancer and producer, uh, to actually work uh, with artists, uh, bring investment and funding for the North area of Brazil artists. So, to, so we, we actually, to make the story short, we actually got a funding from British Council, digital collaboration funding. Uh, I proposed to Ben and Valentina, who are who are partners as well, and and joined in the in the funding call with me. We actually did two shows together with the Lift in within the Lift Festival to actually bring this proposal, this opportunity for North uh, Brazil artists to actually amplify their voices in the Amazon and um, and uh, understand how internationally they could speak more and actually. And I would say contaminate the world or uh, the Eurocentric culture with the Amerindian uh, culture, with Brazilian culture, with the Afro culture from Brazil, is to invert the relationship between object and subject in this story. And, and from this, we started to actually create a great research as a network, basically. Um, who were the people that... Uh, they were so powerful and potent actually uh there were in, grassroots artists that actually could add up to the project and that's how we discovered all these artists that we've been working uh, it were 15 people in the team but 10 of them were protagonist artists indigenous non-indigenous uh Hiberinos and caboclos which are like communities in in the area of the amazon para and other in other in other cities we try to amplify the area as much as we can and to reach the biggest widest areas we can uh, and as i learned during this process actually between the transit between forest city rivers uh everything that is connected in in life um actually uh, offers a transit between cultures urban and forest life and we learn a lot in this project we we actually borrow uh, from Ayrton Krenak uh, speech when he spoke in the conference in Lisbon because he sheds a light in the cosmovision indigenous cosmovision as the world as a common house and there should be more an equal relationship between all the living beings in the the, the 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 world the trees the plants the animals all the species not only the human beings so we borrow that idea about the core responsibility of our role in the preservation uh, in uh, in the day-to-day -day life of the country base uh, of the world basically so uh, each one of the artists came with their own researches, with their own like signature arts, and we we had a very a lot of virtual gatherings uh, um, during the pandemics, and then we were hosted by Andre and Avalda, who are here with our leaders of the community YQ, uh, which is in the peripheral area of Manaus. And, um, and that's where we we live for two weeks, actually in a very intense way, uh, practicing seeing this common house uh, spirit. We actually brought another community from Satanamawe and other areas from from the region that live inside the forest. Uh, and he will be able to actually tell us more about this story. And together with them, we produce a number of different artistic outputs and works, uh, video art, video performance, that actually are being projected at this very moment at the COP26 uh, and Pipe Factory, uh, which they are our partners. Uh, we have Simon here, which is the founder that helped us with this. And to actually, we are invited to join this panel. I'm honored to be part of this. I think the art is a tool to actually change everything, a social change, you change people. They are the, the place where we can breathe through uh, uh, the social difficulties. And I actually now will give the word to give the speech to other, other colleagues that are here uh, and to talk about the responsibility of the arts of the Amazon to actually join the conversation here in, this, in, in, the, in the region. So thank you, Renato. So we didn't talk about an order, but now that Andre and Valda are so together there uh, in the screen, they are both like, I don't know if they were drinking water or acai, which is a Brazilian fruit that we like very much. I was like, my mouth was like drooling already with the idea of having acai. 
I would like to invite Andre and Bauda to actually speak about the experience of Common House, but to also talk about their experience as artists. Um, and because they are as indigenous people for, for, for being in this urban area of Manaus, um, and how they place themselves when we know that this relationship is a very conflictuous one. There is a lot of conflict between the part of being 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 urban, but also being peripheral communities, because we don't see the public policies arriving to us, basically. I, I, I would like to actually hand the word to, um, to Andre and Valda. Uh, so Andre is uh, a leader of the community indigenous community of Waikiru, which is a rural area in Manaus, uh, which is the capital of the Amazon. He is a songwriter, interpreter, dancer, and craftsman, and he fights to keep his people's traditions alive. <coughs> I talked to from Andre, but I'm talking about Andre and Valda. Valda became very famous actually because she uh, she is part of a picture when there was an occupation an illegal occupation of the of the area where she lives and she's facing the policeman with her children in her with a child in his lap it's a very powerful and strong oh yeah he, she had a child in his hands and a child on his, in her belly and it's a very powerful picture because it shows the struggle and the fight of indigenous women uh in this process right now so i'm gonna give them uh, give them the word so they can speak about the about and thank you so much for being here with us he he's just saying something in 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 indigenous so it's just saying good afternoon uh, I think I I yeah just remove the audio from the person who is on the side otherwise he gives like a he gives like a uh, echo in the in the conversation. Yeah, it got better now. Let me help him just very quickly. Sorry about that, guys. Apologies for this. Fala para fechar o microfone, Valda, e na microfone. Fechar o microfone do Zoom. É. Agora. Já. Perfect. We are good now. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Um, each day we will learn more about technology. We are learning more about technology. I would like to thank um, the opportunity to actually be here and talk to you. And uh, for um, see, there's people from a lot of different places uh, in the world and we are very happy to be able to actually share with you uh, a bit of the challenges that we are facing here in the Amazon. I talk a lot, but actually who is the boss? He is my wife, Vanda, <laughs> uh, Valda. Uh, I don't know if they're, if they're in your countries is the same as well. Uh, we have a, a, a story together that we build together when we migrate from closer to Manaus, we were from an indigenous community, and from there we actually discover a new, a new world, a new system, a new that we were not aware of. Actually, we were very young when we left the village. Uh, Valda had fifteen, and I had, was not, and seventeen, and we we and we got married, and uh, and the challenges were always to actually find opportunities. Uh, throughout this urban jungle uh, that we were just moved to. Uh, before, uh, the, the people from Satarema were, there was no boundaries for it. There was no land demarcation. There was no draw. Uh, everything was ours. Indigenous people could say everything was ours. We understood the world as uh, the way we were living in the space that we are living. There was, it was, there was no boundaries. There was no limitations and we would walk around uh, and life would flow in that way. We had some sort of freedom. Uh, my, my grandparents or great grandparents had the freedom uh, to, to go wherever. 
And when we start talking about the opportunities, uh, they started appearing uh, much more when we start to understand the system outside. Uh, when we start thinking about how we need to fight to be heard, actually to make ourselves heard. And, and I shared a lot of this during the, uh, the Casa Comun project because uh, actually we also had a very precious time when we were working because artists with a lot of experience and very different with different um, with different expertises we actually were able to have a moment of one exchanging with the other and talk about the cultures of each other and exchanging ideas it was amazing actually so uh, when when uh, when 2017, when the picture that Vanessa just posted here on the chat, 2008, sorry, uh, uh, it was like very famous, it became worldwide. It was a way of us actually being heard because uh, when the photo went viral, we actually, I was arrested during that time, actually. We were fighting a lot. We still looked a, fight a lot uh, about housing, uh, land, rights, uh, preservation of forests, which is one of the most important things these days, basically, because our culture is actually being dying every single second. Every second that goes by, the system is being swallowing, or swallowing uh, and, and demolishing our culture, and in the same way is digesting and when you when it expel uh, this culture like it was dumping something uh, it's like it doesn't exist anymore it's like they're just like processing our culture and digesting and expelling in a way that is not so we just uh, we just looking through all these years and years of fight and struggle and today what we are looking is about visibility through the arts basically uh, my wife is an artist as well i think she will be able to talk a little bit about more she produces uh, crafts arts and crafts she sings as well so we actually started to interact uh through the music and um uh, because the satamara people like a lot we we have a lot of like ancient musics from our from our ancestral uh people we have our very own instrument and we always sang and and to sing at the time uh it was like how we would bring uh how we were expressing what was in our hearts and we found through to the music we actually found ways of actually expressing the way we were living so uh, yeah the music that we sing talk about this the how much we have fought you here how much our people has been suffering to be here and in the interesting thing about this fight is that we for us to be alive here a lot of us have died actually for us to be alive here and how many more will have to die so that tomorrow our kids and our grandkids must be alive and that our lands are still preserved so uh, there's there's a lot of actually like deforestation uh, there are a lot of like corporations actually taking over our lands from our indigenous people <laughs> the place that we live in, it's uh, we're still being threatened where we live in right now and in constant struggle because of there's always someone trying to actually take over the land that is ours by rights. So we actually... You can continue, André, please. <laughs> So this is a little bit about our, our, our story, because um, uh, tomorrow where we are living, our little forest, our little land can be a building in the future. It can be, uh, it can be a, a, a place made of, of, of actually a gray area, you know, a building uh, made of concrete, and we will be just a picture on the wall to be, uh, you know, remembering us of history. And I think that we fight actually for for this. Actually, this painting is not only a, a reflection of the past, but actually is a reflection of the future, and that our next generation is still very much alive. Um, and we still fight, you know, with arrows. 
we f we fight against the arrows that comes toward us and we learn and we learn now that actually our weapons is the pen and education and the arts it depends on how you actually sign your deals how you commit yourself how how you actually uh, support your people um uh, so because the future generation indigenous future they need to live they need to move ahead if we don't fight today uh, for this tomorrow no one will know who is satere who are the other people uh, who are our other uh, communities indigenous communities around here here in the amazon i always question this i think it's beautiful to learn english learn another dialect learn portuguese but why in the school we also don't learn our local dialect because i think that the system wants to erase us as well erase our language i i think that this is a little bit my words i would like to say that bow for her well good afternoon everyone i'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience uh here in the common house uh, the Casa Comun project. It was a privilege to to be able to greet people here. And how Andres said, it was a beautiful exchange, knowledge exchange, with a lot of uh, with a lot of artists. Yeah, with different backgrounds, and we thought that my art. Uh, when we see common house from other people from from different houses we have a very rich uh, country culture wise uh, the the main thing that we have as a as a as a propeller for culture is our own lives this is the art actually our life is art basically uh, so for me it was a privilege a great privilege to actually greet all these artists here in a beautiful exchange that we had together we learn a lot and and i would like to speak a little bit about about our path our struggle our fight so while we live uh, our struggle is not easy as for as long as we live uh, we want to have better housing we want to have access to health we had want to have like demarcation of lands we want to have um i always say to to people i always think about our tomorrow, our future, which is our children or our grandchildren, we have to, to fight. As Andres said, we are here today because our parents fought. I had my mom that actually fight uh, a lot. She was a warrior. She fought for our housing and a better place for us to live in Manaus when we came from the indigenous village. Um, and today we have a place to live because in our blood, there is there's a warrior blood in us we want to learn and we want to learn something new we want to improve our lives as well a lot of people question why do you leave the indigenous village why did you came to the city i said well because we also want to learn we also want to develop indigenous people we want to actually expose ourselves to value ourselves because we want to be there i think the people a lot of people discriminate us there's a lot of prejudice indigenous people are seen as someone who is discriminated like a minority in the whole country as well in brazil indigenous people are seen with prejudice so in, so i i think i i've never said something like this but after the picture was um, my picture that i that it was taken from me uh it being it brings me a bit when it went viral it brings me a bit of joy but also a bit of sadness because because that moment was a very sad moment for me because we were like getting beaten up we were getting you we were being like harassed by by policemen they actually throw our our weapons our our our, our artifacts all in the floor and we couldn't do anything so today i'm happy because because that fight actually where we were fighting for demarcation we were fighting for land now it became a neighborhood it's a big neighborhood we stood we stood for our land and now it became an indigenous neighborhood actually so this is an example to leave to our children to leave to our parents to lead to uh, to leave to our relatives that we need to fight for our land we need to fight for housing and to preserve nature as well as it is right now 
we don't want it to end we we it's it's the base of our lives basically uh so i thank so much for the opportunity to be able to speak in here today and to be here with you it's extremely important for you guys to look at us and give this opportunity so we can actually speak up from our perspective and you are seeing us Thank you, Valda. Thank you, Andre. It's so good to hear you guys. It's so beautiful to hear your voices. I'm a, I'm a bit emotional even with this. Um, I would like to pass the, uh, the baton to Roberta Carvalho. Roberta is um, an, a multimedia artist uh, from Belém, uh, Pará, which is in the Amazon region. And she is the creator of the Amazon Mapping Festival, which is one of the most interesting festivals that there is only in the region, but also in the, the country in Brazil and also in the whole country. And, and Roberta, she brings a vision which is very important, which is about Tech, a technological vision of the Amazon. For those who don't know the Amazon, we are also very techno cheesy, as we say. It's a is a rhythm, is a Brazilian rhythm that it only exists in that region. Uh, it's called techno cheesy. We dance that is a is a rhythm, is a mix of rhythms uh, with uh, electronic and local uh, sounds, and to show that we are really like this plural thing. Uh, we absorb uh, different cultures and we actually transform them with a different vision. We, 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 we send that to the world. We don't have many problems with like uh, copyrights, basically. We love, we love the, the, the mixing of, of cultures, basically. We would like to actually, for Roberta to speak and talk about art as a transformational tool and how did you work with the communities, Ribeirinhas, which is the communities that live by the shores of the rivers in the Amazon, and how did you work about projecting these communities in the forest, and how this art that we search is not a colonizing art, is an art that needs to come from the region, from the people to the world, and not from the world to the region. So we would like to hear from you uh, and understand a bit more about your experience with the common house, Casa Comum. Oh, thank you, great. Vanessa, good afternoon, good evening for everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for uh, the invite for being here. Andre, Renato, it's a pleasure. I would like to, first of all, uh, present myself. I'm, I'm a visual artist and I do a lot of multimedia projects. I develop works with video, with uh, public intervention, video projection, uh, mixed reality. And um, one of the works that I, that I produce is um, with this that Vanessa spoke about, which is the, the relationship between projected images. My, my research is very much aligned with that, actually, of the material image uh, of the image projected in environments from my region, basically, because I believe uh, a, a lot about this idea of a hidden cinema in the Amazon forest. When you talk about projection and video mapping, we talk a lot about the relationship with different like screens, with different projection areas. But when we talk about cinema, expanded cinema, as we said, I think a lot about the idea that this screen, this space where you project things, it's something that it's that have an other layers, basically, beyond their materiality, basically. So I would like to say that these screens have other meanings. They tell stories as well. So I have a project that is called uh, Project uh, Symbiosis, which is uh, projects images uh, in in great scale like faces of people in the forests in rivers in the amazon region and with this i connect uh, uh in dialogue with communities from the hiberinha area which is the people that live by the shores of the rivers in the amazon region and we did one in the common house project the casa comum i present a relationship with andre which he just spoke right now and the relationship within the community around him Oh, besides that, I have a festival, which is called Amazonia Mapping, which is a festival about art and technology and mixed reality, which has been happening since 2013, which searches about creating a relationship between Amazon voices and interacting with other artists in Brazil and outside Brazil as well 
to actually talk about uh, issues that cross this, this, this region. It's interesting when we talk about the Amazons, we think that the Amazon is not only a place that actually uh, is it, talking only about that region. When we talk about the Amazon, we talk about global matters. And more than never today, we are talking, understanding this, how the life of this forest actually is, is based on the life of the whole planet, actually, how we depend on it. It's a place that we need to actually look very carefully and with a lot of attention to understand and when we talk about the art that is made in the amazon region we are talking about voices of artists that um that we are talking about artists voices that are the voices of transformations because we are talking about voices that transform the world uh, the amazon region is a place that breeds culture and from this experience that we have as an artist from this place, we actually incorporate the contemporary world as, world as well in this. So it's a, it's a one way of thinking how technology and urban can actually connect with this, with this region. So this space is also that we created is the moment for us to talk about colonization. I think that every time that we produce something in the Amazon, it is revising uh, itself, but also revising the story, history of the country, the history of the world, actually, the 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 perspective of the people that uh, the indigenous communities of black artists. It's important to talk that there is black a black Amazon as well, people black people in the Amazon. So it it presents this dynamic about the potency of all this ancestrality uh, of the forest. And at the same time, the cities around in the middle of all of this uh, and how this place was actually occupied. There's a lot of violence about occupying the forest. Uh, so the Amazon is, a, is, a, is at the same time is a chaos, but it's also a place that heals everything. So I think that it's interesting to talk about a vision of the Amazon that uh, we need as artists to fight against, which is an idyllic vision and a stereotyped vision of this place that because it is a great forest but it is also a very multiple place with a lot of different identities the amazon is diverse in its languages and it's diverse in its subjects as well so we have an amazon that is lgbtq we have amazing artists como william sodoma which he was part of the amazon mapping which is part of casa comum as well he's an lgbtq um He's a drag queen, basically. Uh, I think it's a reductive way of explaining him, but he's an incredible artist, the LGBTQ, that had great uh, space here in the Biennale, here in, in the Brazil. But it's also this indigenous uh, Amazon. It's, it's black Amazon, it's feminine, it's, uh, it's ancestral, and it's technological as well. And it's actually like, uh, there's a lot of sound in it. And when Vanessa talks about techno cheesy, as we say, which is something very, characteristic from the region we talk about technology as well because it's ways of actually taking advantage of technology which is not necessarily the things that you read in a manual basically but ways that we created ourselves to actually incorporate technology in our day-to-day -day lives we recreate possibilities of using these tools and creating new narratives and new speeches in this in these conversations and in a way it's an iconoclast uh, uh, approach to it so and <coughs> So these artists, they they are in a it's a it's a relationship as well because these artists they they relate itself with these people, with these identities, and with these communities as well. So it's a it's a space of a lot of potency, and it's a very important to talk about this Amazon in this way. And I think that this protagonism it would only be created in the moment that we actually make space to occupy by these artists. Um, so they can develop possibilities for them to be in these places of speech uh, and not only uh, actually delivering projects or things that are, that are, they, they are told to do, basically. It's worth to actually say that it needs to, we need to make space so that things are created and are seen.
Obrigada, Roberta. Muito obrigada. Nossa. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you so much. I love that you said that Amazon uh, at all times is a struggle, is a fight. It is true. Uh, we've been fighting since we are very young to be heard, to be seen, to be seen by all the areas of Brazil. Uh, the Amazon is about combat, basically. And this is something very, very interesting. And this I will go to Alcemar, which is... Can you hear us, Alcemar? Yay, Alcemar. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm a bit lost here in my notes, sorry, but Alcemar Reis is an artist uh, that from the, from the Povo Satarama web. And um, I would like to actually um, pass the conversation to Alcemar to talk about the continuation of what Roberta just tell, told us about this relationship uh, between their between the romantic vision uh, that people has of have of the Amazon region uh, and about uh, and the relationship with what we produce which is contemporary is multidisciplinary it's different it's urban I would like to hear about your experience in Casa Comun project and with Renato and the other artists which we think that because we are in the Amazon it's all the same thing the Parada, Mapai state the Amazon state and it's not uh, we are we have so many diverse cultures. It's a lot of Amazons within one Amazon. And I would like to hear you, Alcemar, to talk about this, this multiplace. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. It's so great to be here once more. Uh, this gathering. It, it was a place for me talking about this this gathering is is where we were we felt so much so welcome uh, our people to have a lot of artists from the Amazon region uh, in from Brazil actually together so uh, the experience uh, that I had in Casa Comum um, for is, was something that we as indigenous people we were already living because we leave the common house the casa comum every day when we get together when we talk together when we eat together when we celebrate together when we dance together uh, so this is a common house for us this is something common for us so with this uh, with these artists that came from um, from all together we became like a common house basically we we shared our experience for the, uh, with a number of different artists uh, in the way that they were uh, actually acting they were delivering work so the amazon is it's something so big it's something so wide that it becomes it, it filled with rivers and forests and you got a pass which is a type of of trees where everything converge together and all the people actually get together in the middle of the forest different cultures where all the artists are in the middle of the ocas which is their local houses as well so the amazon is this the amazon is uh, is life uh, and is where we all hug all types of different cultures together and where we gather where we eat and as Andrea is saying, is, is drinking some Guarana, which is a local drink as well here together on my side. So this is the Amazon. Uh, so the Amazon is, um, as a lot of people, uh, they think that the Amazon is the Manaus city uh, or uh, I brought a lot of people to the village here. And when they arrive here in the capital, they think that they're gonna meet the indigenous pe people all naked um uh, that and and when they get here they find something different completely different and say but what happened here what how is this is not the amazon that i was thinking about but we are indigenous and we are looking for life improvements and different and different lives opportunities um, so i'm from the andira hill river which is so distant from here from Manaus and I came here all the way here to study to graduate myself and go back to my village so today I work with graphic design I do painting I do craftsmanship I 
I work with like different masks, uh, uh, everything. So, hey, is, this is it basically. Common House brought something very important to us. To show the artist, showcase the artist that is within us. Amazon. That is in the, within the Amazon. Because we were just showcasing ourselves, just to ourselves, the, the, our work. But now, when Casa Comun arrived, we actually are in the world now. People are seeing us, our common house, our Casa Comun. Uh, we are there now. We are being seen. So people are actually taking a look at these artists, which are not just in the village right now, but they are uh, with their posters, with their films, with their with their struggles uh, everywhere now. If 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 it wasn't like when when Valda talked about her picture, if it wasn't for that register, that picture that actually showcased her struggle, uh, that neighborhood that now lives because of her, it wouldn't it wouldn't be there. So uh, behind the fight of the women, the indigenous women, uh, of the young people, of the men, the indigenous men, is where we get stuff. So the the common house, Casa Comun, brought something to us uh, where we could showcase. Uh, transform and transform um, so I transform things uh, from the nature based in nature I see my 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 ancestral people I see the voices of many of them couldn't actually develop further but today us for instance I do my crafts my art thinking about my great-grandparents my grandparents thinking about nature as I said as Andrea said some people needed to die for us to be here. And today I say to, to you guys, uh, today I actually die. I mean, it was necessary that a parrot died. So actually uh, it's alive in my head, in, in my head right now as, a, as an interpretation through our headband right now. It's a symbol of actually loyalty of warriors is a symbol of nature so nature is this is, is is our mother where we plant where we get everything that we need from so the preservation of the nature is what we think is the most important thing uh, to nurture and to get something better from our future and that's what i want to say so we are gonna we are gonna go now at uh, the last, the the last person, which is Wellington, which is our which is our professor from the Amazon region, uh, which is a theater director from the Amapá. So Wellington has a very important uh, work with uh, with uh, an island uh, in the Amazon, which is called Techno Boat, which is a very interesting uh, project where they he goes by boat and work uh, with young people from these islands. Bailiki is the is the the region where he goes to, and he's the bigger biggest producer of acai in the world. Uh, acai, for those who don't know, is one of the most important ingredients. It's a fruit, uh, which is a very important ingredient now for the uh, beauty uh, industry. And it's produced in the Amazon, nowhere else. There is no other place where the acai is produced. So it's basically produced in Amapá, in Pará. And in this island, uh, Bailiki is one of the islands that has the worst uh, I, um, social and welfare uh, numbers in the country. And is one of the places that actually can disappear uh, at any moment because of the climate change, actually. So at the same time where we export acai, which is such a powerful, actually, ingredient right now, we are also living in extreme structural poverty and inequality in this region. So I would just ask the Wellington to actually uh, talk about I don't know if you want to actually answer this conversation about the role of the Amazon artist or if you want to talk about the experience uh, of the techno boat it's open for you to speak thank you thank you so much Vanessa thank you Renato uh, good afternoon to everyone and good night to everyone that are here 
uh, I'm very happy to actually meet here Alcemar and Lauda, Roberta here uh, after a couple of months uh, of Casa Comum. Pro uh, thinking about the privilege of being together in Casa Comum, the project when we were out together. We started in a virtual residency gathering and now we and then we had a very a personal moment to actually be together um, uh, and we did uh, the all the things that we could uh, together so we're actually being able to actually see you guys again here from the region and with the region right now with everyone from the region for me is wonderful uh, casa comum the common house uh, was a project that um, gave me the opportunity to actually think about to work about uh, uh, the work of a lot of artists and work with artists that I admire for a very long time that I knew online but I never had the opportunity to actually work together in person because we live in a region that actually in a way it's it's a continent actually uh, the, the the geographical distances in Brazil are huge and in a way this reflects the difficulty that we actually can create projects and make them um, uh, to happen in the region so if we come from a place that is huge geographically imagine in touch with other regions of the country as well so when i think about the uh, of uh, all the artists that we have in this context i keep thinking about all the people that we what we can produce to create bridges uh, uh, local bridges regional bridges national and international bridges between the artists that actually can actually make the communication happen and flow between us uh, today we say like all oh, the world is entirely connect but do you think that this is actually for everyone so do you think that is actually like this connection is actually privileged it's, it's just for some people for a few people uh, I know that there were a lot of people that actually in the countryside of the Amazon, in the deep forest in the Amazon, they live in extreme isolation and, uh, and um, they criticize uh, the way of living of these people because they don't live in the forest, because they don't live only the river. Guys, for us to live in the river, not always the river has fish for them to, to, to fish. Uh, for people to live in the forest, you have to protect them. You have to actually be able to, you have to respect all the ecosystem that is around them. So the indigenous people actually have been teaching us a lot about this. Uh, the relationship between body, forest, community is another thing when we start listening to what they have to say to us. So uh, a discussion that I have a lot present nowadays uh, when we think about the Amazon is let's give voice to the region. So the voices are already there. The voices are already there and just need, just, just need to be heard. The voices are everywhere. But who, in fact, have the interest of actually listening to them? <coughs> who, in fact, have interest to actually making them being heard and giving them opportunity in prime time, let's say, so we can learn and relearn, actually, with our our own problems and our own structures, as Vanessa is mentioning about the the... the as Vanessa mentioned about, we, we are many Amazons. And it's true, we are very plural. Uh, I was born in Amapá. I lived there until I was 18. And I got to know Manaus, which is the biggest second city in the Amazon, only when I was 30 years old. So, and it was another city, completely different. So within our constitution, as an individual person, and, and then I speak a lot about myself when I say, um, there is a desire and an expectation um, because we live in a, in a society in cities for instance Macapá or Amapá and other states in Brazil there's the the less <coughs> possibility of actually um, sanitary support it's, it's very little that uh, that there is of actually electricity housing the social structure that we have and this actually influenced directly in the imaginary, in, in the vision of our children, of our young people, that they are not taught or are not actually made to believe that their place where they live is a, that has value. It's, it, we, I have nothing against people leaving their places uh, to actually go to different places to develop yourself, professionalize yourself. 
but I find it beautiful when people actually go outside and they come back and understand the region where we live in, in a place that must be seen and must be produced by us, artists, uh, local artists. The most of the time goes by, pass by. I feel myself as an artist uh, to go back to my activities, to the people uh, uh, that are in the margins of, of society and try to understand that the floor that they step in, they are very, very valuable. They're unique. They're unique. They are one of a kind. They are they are filled with identity and cultures that deserve to be heard, that deserve to be seen, that deserve to be invited to be shared with other. So that's why the work that we do with Technobarca, which happened started ten years ago, uh, in the Bainiki, which is where my mother is from. Uh, there's also like a, a, a maternal a link to this area. I had this aim to actually, alongside with children, local children, with these villages, with these people that live distant from Macapá, distant from the urban areas, the only way to access this place is through boats. It's very, very small boats that actually go through trips, which is almost like an ocean because they are in between the Atlantic Ocean and the Amazon River. So it's like 50 islands that are there, uh, I mean, consumed by the water, by the water flow, basically. So, and that's why they are disappearing, basically. So there is a, an exodus, basically, a rural exodus of this area, uh, the, of this population in direction to the city. And I keep asking myself, what changes? What does it, what do we lose with all of this, with this shift of, of this transition? I wonder if the public policies could not actually give a better look to structure these communities in a better way, which are the biggest producers of acai, as Vanessa just said uh, right now to us. And at the same, they are the biggest producers, but they don't get the resources to actually have reinvested these resources in the area. They are literally robbed. They are literally every day used by the system because acai is sold to very high costs outside, exported internationally. But in the end, the person that actually um, uh, produces the acai sometimes gets like a very basic income, minimum income, minimum wage, uh, which is, is, is in a way is a series of little violences that we suffered every day. Uh, that we understand when we get into this deep Brazil area, as I called, which are not in actually in the newspapers, which is not in the in the in the central area of Brazil, which are not on the television, uh, because we have a structure of the country which is very very centralized in terms of budget, in terms of uh, structure in the south and central area of Brazil. Uh, we talk a lot about this, about the public funding, actually, because many of the times uh, it, they don't take in consideration all the production uh, of the Amazon people in, in theatrical, cinema, visual arts uh, production. Uh, they are not they are not actually uh, taken seriously and they are not actually the, the money doesn't come decentralized to these areas. Uh, I mean, you can understand how difficult it is actually for us to actually take a festival or take a or take a play to this area how hard it is and when we talk um when we talk with like other with people who culture makers in the in the, the country we are put in the same uh, position as all the other people from other areas they don't take in consideration the disadvantage that we have in the region and the lack of resources that we have to actually reinforce and support again these artists uh, and sometimes it feels like people think that in the Amazon there are not qualified professionals or or, or like high tech art or contemporary art. Uh, avançou muito com o programa Cultura Viva, né, no governo aí Lula, no, na gestão do Gilberto Gil, mas a gente está agora completamente assolado por uma destruição, por um desmonte né, no nosso país e que isso reflete né, radicalmente 
né, em regiões mais periféricas, como a Amazônia, o Nordeste. Então, né? as the Amazon, the North. Okay. Uh, so Renata was just saying for us to speak a little bit slower because she can do the translation to English properly. Sorry, Renata. Um, so Simon, uh, which is one of the, the pipe factory, they need to actually close the line Glasgow, the building. So we are going to have another 10 minutes for actually 10 minutes to conversation. If anyone has any question for Renato or for Wellington or for Andre or for Valda or for anyone, does anyone has any questions? Uh, Renato, would you like to mention something uh, or anyone else? I think we can actually go for questions. Otherwise, we can actually continue talking. Um, so now I don't have anything in the chat. So I think it's a bit like it makes me dizzy a little bit uh, to actually when we talk to actually go deeper in the conversation was Ellington was saying and listening to all these questions uh, that Roberta actually uh, placed here, uh, Wilda and uh, and also Mara as well. Um, I think that the access that Wellito is being very kind when he's being kind to talking about uh, central and south area. He expanded a little bit. And actually, it's Rio and Sao Paulo only in Brazil that you have so you have some other funding opportunities in Brasilia, sometimes Porto Alegre, which is the extreme south Brazil. But in fact, this production, this investment, it's a uh, it's um, it's more focused on Rio and Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo, basically, mm. um, uh, which allows that uh, uh, artists as as Roberta, which is a, a very important artist right now, she has to live in São Paulo so she can develop her work. So Wellington also experienced this of actually living this diaspora of actually having to go to other countries, uh, other other states to actually develop his work and then coming back to. <coughs> so all this little violence, the social uh, environmental uh, violences uh, displaced uh, the people that live in these areas. I think that it comes from Europe, uh, understands a little bit. And with, when we think about the, the gentrification process in Europe, isn't it? Or in the UK, for instance, gentrification is an evil uh, process. You know that the capital makes the places inaccessible for people to live in, the, in a certain region. So for those who live in the, in, so people who are the, the residents of a place for the last 100 years are have to leave because they now corporations came by and, and build all these nice restaurants, all these nice buildings and made the state, uh, the, the, the value of the, of the area to go up. And then artists and people that were living there had to leave. It's like, uh, it's a cleaning process. Uh, of the area of the poverty, po the po poorest people, of the black people, of the LGBTQ people, of the indigenous communities. We are trying to clean up uh, these areas. Uh, these bodies are actually marginalized by the system, by the capital, basically. So the capital just simply transformed the, the, the environment. Uh, it builds a, like, um, uh, it, it, so it, it's always killing the life that is possible in each region uh, as a place like Tottenham in London, where where they changed completely the, the relationship with the area and its residents like Brooklyn and New York as well. They changed completely the relationship with gentrification. So when we go back to the title of this project, uh, when we go back to the role of the artist, I think a lot about Augusto Boal because they needed to do legislative theater because they understood that the only way of creating solution is actually discussing public policies through the arts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, and we actually take artists as part of civil society, as as activists, as institution as well, because the the, the the public power is extremely difficult to think about the transformation coming from them. 
and I think that it's actually very hard to think about any preservation in terms of environment without thinking about inequalities, social inequalities and economic socialities and gender inequalities um, in, 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 this, in the world, yeah. So I would like to actually thank the opportunity for everyone that is here uh, for us to be able to participate on the debate thank Vanessa for actually making this effort of actually of actually making this panel happening alongside with Anna, with Renata, uh, with uh, people from Casa Ninja. And again, I would like to thank all my beautiful uh, uh, friends and artists that are here that makes me, made me grow so much as an artist and a person when I'm close to them. Thank you so much, people. Thank you, Renata. So, so say it, six, 13, we're going to have to finish a bit earlier. Simon is telling me. I apologize for this, but thank you so much, Sidat, by your message. I agree. We need to have more art to actually bring us together. And thank you as well, Francesca, for actually uh, this conversation that we are having. She's curious to understand a bit more about the relationship between the arts of the Amazon and the commercial art galleries around the world. Mm -hmm very interesting. I think this is something that is a provocation that actually we can talk more about it, actually. It's very, very interesting. Uh, and a very important conversation about this nowadays. And what we want to talk as well, thank you so much for everyone, Andre, Valdau, Semar, Roberta, Wellington, about the dis discussion just it's just starting now. We want to continue this conversation. We want, I think that Casa Comun, uh, the Common House will also continue. I would like to huge, say a huge thank you to Ben, Valentina, Renato, Ana de Donet, and Priscila Brasil, and, uh, and Renata Pepe, who is making the translation right now, the simultaneous translation. And we'll keep you guys posted about the continuation of Casa Comun and about the, the next steps of this house because there's a lot of things that we're going to explore in this relationship. And I really, really, really uh, hope that we keep ourselves informed. I put the links here on Tecnobarca, Tecnoboat, Casa Comun, uh, Amazonia Mapping, the picture of Valda as well. So you can get to know a bit more about these stories. And we, we will continue this conversation with more space from the Amazon and artists, from more voices from the Amazon, and we hope to actually bring them internationally. And we, and we hope with more public policies and more money that we can make Amazon and art to speak by itself. Thank you very much. Can I just thank, uh, sorry to interrupt.